Okay, so glycine is an amino acid and it's really important for um, cell development, for tissue growth, for DNA formation, for blood cells, uh, blood vessels. It's just like so important, okay? And this is found in bone broth and meats with the skin on, the bone in, pork rinds, animal fat, um, basically animal foods is what it's found in. <laughs> it is so important to fuel your growing placenta and your growing uterus and your growing stomach and all the, the skin that's being stretched, it's really important. Your body uses 800 times more collagen when you are pregnant just to grow your womb and your uterus and placenta and all your skin and everything. So having um, glycine is just so important. Um, things that are high in glycine are also really high in, um, in collagen. Things like uh, chicken skin and bone broth and that sort of stuff. I'm going to read this study to you guys. So, as pregnancy advances, the endogenous production of glycine, meaning what your body produces from other amino acids, may be insufficient to satisfy the increasing demands. So it's just super essential and you can't get this from other amino acids. Um, choline is also really important for the production of glutathione and glutathione is your body's master antioxidants in your uh, antioxidant, antioxidant yep, in your liver. So it helps your body um, detoxify harmful substances, um, you know, environmental toxins, because you obviously don't want it going to the baby. So you want your body to be having lots of glutathione pumping through so that your liver is working in tip-top shape so that your baby is not being harmed or affected by any toxic chemicals. Because we are living in a world full of toxic chemicals. So glutathione is amazing. The best source of glutathione is bone broth. Um, and then also like glycine as well. Um, and turmeric is a really, really good way to help boost your liver's detoxification pathways as well. So glycine, going back to collagen, glycine is the most abundant amino acid in collagen and collagen is the most abundant protein. It's found in every single cell of your body, every single cell of your body. So by eating glycine, you're really supporting your body and helping it, you know, create more collagen for your growing womb and your growing uterus and stuff and for your baby's growing cells to help reduce stretch, stretch marks and stuff, especially for after pregnancy, all of that, that really important stuff. Um, studies do show that, um, that, that in vegetarians, glycine markers are substantially lower than in non-vegetarians and a high, high proportion of pregnant women do exhibit, um, very low levels of glycine as well. I mean, this is probably also to do with marketing telling us that, you know, animal fat's bad, don't eat the pork rind, um, and, and, you know, chicken skin's bad and all that sort of stuff. It's not bad. It's really, really good for you. So the combination of being vegetarian or vegan when you are pregnant and then the increasing demands of glycine and collagen and all these amino acids from your body and all of these vitamins when you're pregnant, it's just not a good combo. Like you are bound to be deficient when you're pregnant if you are, if you are especially if you're a vegetarian or vegan because you are very likely to be deficient beforehand because you're not going to be obtaining these nutrients from a diet otherwise so um yeah <laughs> yeah um and like with a even with a vegetarian diet you might think oh like you know dairy and eggs um, yes, for some things, but you would really have to go out of your way as a vegetarian, not even a vegan, as a vegetarian, to get enough glycine because eggs and dairy foods are not an abundant source of glycine. An abundant source of glycine is bone broth and slow cooked meats and the chicken skin and all that stuff that is not going to be found in a vegetarian or vegan diet. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is DHA. So DHA is a fat um, and it is not the same as AHA. So DHA is found mostly in animal foods. It's kind of like vitamin A. People think they can convert AHA, which is plant fats. People think they can convert AHA to DHA, but you don't have a high enough conversion rate for it to be um, for it to be optimal for pregnancy. So your brain and eyes need DHA and plant fats um, are AHA. So if you're having lots of plant fat, that's great because like 
you know, it's still a very healthy source of omega-3 fats, but um, it's not DHA, and DHA is what's needed for your brain and eyes, but most importantly, for your baby's brain and eyes. So when your body is converting AHA into DHA, the conversion rate is only 3.8%, so 3.8% of the fat from AHA will be converted to DHA, but if your diet's very high in omega-6 fats, which most people's diets are, unless you go out of your way like I do to avoid all vegetable oils and all that sort of stuff, then your diet will be high in vitamin in, in omega-6s, which is not optimal. And if your diet is high in omega-6s, that conversion rate of AHA to DHA drops to only 1.9%. So vegetable oil is a whole different thing. Um, I will link my blog post below talking about how toxic vegetable oil is because um, I'm not going to get into that right now. Okay, I want to read you guys a study because I want to make sure that I get the, the facts right and this is about fatty acids in um, vegans. So, uh, let me find it. Okay, so a study looked at essential fatty acids in vegans. Uh, note the average time a subject had been on a vegan diet was seven years compared to omnivores including a set of mothers and their exclusively breastfed infants. This study was before the era of vegan-derived DHA and before the popularity of fish oil supplements, so all mothers were unsupplemented. The results showed that DHA levels were 65% lower in plasma, 67% lower in red blood cells, and 61% lower in breast milk from vegans compared to omnivores. That's a really big amount. 61% of vegans are lower in breast milk than omnivores. Uh, sorry, 61% of vegans have lower DHA levels in their breast milk compared to omnivores, which is not good. Like your baby is brain is developing, you know? Um, DHA levels in the red blood cells of infants were 69% lower in infants of vegan mothers compared to infants of omnivores, all exclusively breastfed. 69% lower in vegan mothers. These results are not one off, another study confirms. I'll link the links below. It's undeniable, guys, that you just are not going to be able to get the amount, same amount of nutrient density from a vegan or even a vegetarian diet. Okay, vegetarian isn't the end of the world. It's You can still do it, but a vegan diet, you just can't do it. And if you've got a problem with, like, say, eating the meat or the flesh, I get that maybe you've created that problem in your head. So, one, get the fuck over it because you've probably just been telling yourself, ew, 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 because of the movies that you've watched and the friends that you've been around and the people that have told you being vegan is the best and you're eating animals. How can you eat animals? It's like, well, animals eat animals. Like, the animal that you're being friends with because friends are animals, like, because, you know, animals are friends, the fucking cow that you're being friends with is eating fucking worms and everything else. Like, it's just called the life cycle. So, like fucking grow up basically i don't mean to be blunt here but i'm like a little, i'm pretty i've got strong arguments here and i'm pretty um yeah this it does annoy me when people are like animal our animals are our friends i i get that like you don't want to abuse the animal because that's not very nice to them but mother nature put them here for the fucking life cycle worms are there they eat the worms all this other stuff okay anyway back to it um, so DHA is also really important for inflammation, so reducing inflammation in the brain especially. So it actually protects your baby's brain from inflammation and damage, which is obviously like so important. You don't want your baby to be born with a damaged brain. And then this is a good one. During the last three months of pregnancy, your baby accumulates 67 milligrams, 67 milligrams of DHA, DHA fat every single day. 67 milligrams of DHA every single day. That's a lot. So you need to eat the food. <laughs> if you do need to be taking a supplement, you want to be making sure that your DHA supplement contains something called EPA, which helps um, your the DHA actually get transported across the placenta to your baby. That's just a little like side note for you. So I know that people could then be like, oh, well, I'll take DHA supplements. No, no, no. So... I know like the supplementation that's fine whatever um but when you're eating a food like fish for example that's when you are eating a food like my god shut up phone's fucking digging when you are eating a food for example that's containing dha like fish or whatever um or seafood um that has other nutrients in there that are vital for pregnancy so eat the food over having the supplement because then you get a wide range of nutrients and of course when everything's in balance your body can absorb it more and our bodies recognize um food sources better than supplement sources 
So all of this um, information, it's literally just a snippet of all the research that I've that I have accumulated uh, about why I would never recommend a vegan diet to a male or female. The only time that I would ever say, yep, yeah, go on a vegan diet is if, for example, you've been on holidays and you need a cleanse. Being on a vegan diet and eating just plants, it's a cleanse. It's not, um, your body cannot sustain it. So you are on a fast, essentially. Um, that's the only time that I would ever recommend doing it is if you're feeling really, really bogged down and I'm like, okay, just eat veggies all of today with like some healthy fats and keep it really, really simple. Don't do any meat or whatever. But I know people also say like, my body can't digest meat. Your body can digest meat. We are made to digest meat. It's just that one, you've either telling your body you can't digest meat, um, or like your gut lining, just is, your gut is just not good, um, which is the, for most of us. So if you find it's really challenging to actually digest meat and you get a bit of an upset stomach, especially after things like liver, because um, liver is very, very high in protein um, and very, very high in um, cholesterol and fat, good cholesterol and good fat. So your body, you can feel a little bit like heavy and like um, whatever after you eat a lot of liver, a lot of liver. Um, I would definitely make sure that before you eat meat that you have some apple cider vinegar or some lemon juice in water just to help your enzymes get revved up and ready to go. Um, but you can digest meat. We are made to digest meat. We are not made to digest a whole pile of gluten. In fact, side note, no human actually has the ability to, to effectively digest gluten. We don't have um, the enzymes to to, to to actually digest that protein, that's a whole other argument. Um, but we do have the ability to digest meat. So, and you know, start off doing more slow cooker meats and stuff because you know, when you slow cook a meat, it's breaking, the slow cooker is literally breaking the meat down for you. So it's even easier on your digestive system. And that's why when you eat meat, you wanna eat it in its whole form. Don't eat a fucking dry chicken breast. Do not even eat a chicken breast, okay? It's got, doesn't have many nutrients in it. You're literally just eating a pile of muscle. You're much better off eating the thigh with the skin on the bone in. One, you could digest it better because in its whole form with the skin and the bone. Two, it tastes a million times better. And three, you actually get more nutrients in it. When you eat um, and when you eat meat and it's in its whole form, so like the leg of a lamb with the fat still on it and the bone in, you will get more nutrients from it than you would just eating the muscle. Um, because when you cook meat with its ligaments and bones and even a bit of blood if you can and the fat, um, that's the way it's meant to be cooked and this is more traditional diet sort of thing, you will then absorb more nutrients from the meat itself from doing that. And it's, I, I also think that it's more of a respect, it's more respect to the animal because um, you are being respectful and grateful for the whole entire package. You're not being greedy and being like, I just want the sirloin or the eye fillet steak. You are actually appreciating the whole entire animal. Um, so yeah. Anyway, please subscribe guys. Please write your thoughts below. Send me some hate mail if you want. Um, I don't care. I love a bit of hate mail because it makes me think. It helps me boost my arguments and it means that if you guys are sending me hate mail, you've taken the time out of your day to send it. And so it's just sparking a little bit of controversy or a little bit of thought in your mind. And that's all I'm here to do. Um, well, that's not all I'm here to do, but that's part of what I'm here to do. Just, just create some thought. So, um, yeah, send me, uh, leave me your comments below, um, and give me a like if you would like to and share, maybe share this with a friend. Um, just follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, um, all those big social media channels um, so that you can stay in the loop to make sure that you don't miss out on one of my talks when I do a talk because I jam pack them full of information and um, I always get very, very beautiful and amazing feedback afterwards. So that is uh, me in a nutshell. That is the anti being in a nutshell. Um, let me know your thoughts and yeah, have a good day. I always forget like I forget to like say things on these, the end of these things. I don't know. Anyway, that's that. Have a good day.